peace power and light so I figured I wanted to make a quick video um, and just kind of try to provide some direction relative to you know where we are and where we need to go I see a lot of things that make me very proud today I see a lot of pride that I used to see back in the 70s um, I, I see people greeting each other and calling each other king and queen and I'm hearing nation building efforts and I love this right this is where we need to be however we also need to be moving in a cohesive capacity that doesn't necessarily mean that we all need to be doing the, the same thing and it doesn't mean that we necessarily need to be communicating every day no we don't um, if we stand around talking about hey you know what we need is unity and we're waiting for unity to happen well we're gonna have a problem right there's a you in unity so as long as you are moving in the appropriate direction and I'm moving in the appropriate direction we're gonna get to the same place right so we don't necessarily have to all be together however we must think critically and we must share critical thought in order to direct our movements and ensure that they're going to bring about the most nutrition for the effort that's put in okay so towards that end I created this little quick session just to holler at you okay um, so what is our current posture we're currently standing in another man's house and we're complaining about the heat right it's cold here we don't like it right and we're trying we want to turn up the heat we're standing in another man's house and we're talking about the art that he has on his wall and it's not reflective of the positive images that we hold of ourselves and the entertainment that they have on the idiot box right and the things that they think are funny strike us as crazy right and the things that they do normally just you know they don't really fit with us it's not within our nature right so we're standing in this other man's house and we're complaining about all these elements of life and how they disparately impact us okay what is the solution do you march protest boycott what do you do what do you do you build your own damn house that's what you do right you build your own house and we've all come to this right we've all come to the conclusion that the only thing that we can do is build our own okay whether that be here or on the continent but we're still playing in a system where the dollars have the pictures of slave masters right you got Andrew Jackson that bred five people into a plantation of 150 right so we're still at the mercy of their money and their monetary system so there's some very clear things that have to be considered in every single nation building effort okay one of the things that I most clearly want to impart and have people think is that any nation building effort that you begin cannot in any way shape or form count on the local economy that it's going to in order to be able to sustain itself that is to say you can get the land right you can get land anywhere and if your thinking is we're gonna move a hundred people to that land we're gonna grow food we're gonna engage in alternative gener uh, methods of generating power we're going to live in a self-sustained capacity I love that how are you gonna do it where are you gonna find the money to get the grain how are you going to um, have heavy equipment that you're gonna to need to be able to build these things where does this money come from if you think that you're going to be able to move a hundred people to a place and then count on working at Walmart or CVS or anything else to be able to fuel your vision you are sadly mistaken what that does is it gives that local economy the control over your endeavor if they determine that they want to shut you down they don't have to sell you grain they can make it difficult for you to be able to get the heavy equipment that you need right so we cannot in any way shape or form count on a local economy to be able to sustain the endeavors that we are putting forth right how do you do that how do you do that okay I, I've got some examples that I want to go through first and foremost I want to kind of speak about a couple of events that we saw recently okay we saw Ferguson riots and in the Ferguson riots we saw two factions we saw American people protesting an event okay and they were there 
uh, with righteous anger to protest an event. Okay. Then you saw the overseers. And the overseers didn't come to protest. What they came to do was not serve those people that were there, right? They didn't come to serve them. What they came to do was protect and serve, but not the people, the properties. You, you got to go back and read what this is really all about. They came to protect and serve the municipality. So now look back at the backdrop. Look at where the protesters are standing. There's Walgreens, there's CVS, there's um, Wendy's, there's this is the municipality. And the people that are protesting don't own any of those properties. And so as a result, the officer can come up and say, move along. And guess what? You have to because you are not on your property. We have been transgenerational renters in another man's reality. And as a result of that, they can come to that property at any given time and say, whatever they like. And we saw that happen. We saw them shooting rubber bullets. We saw them dropping um, grenades into the crowd. Why? Because they need to disperse you from their properties, right? Okay. Juxtapose that against another event that took place. That's Clive Bundy. Clive Bundy has been stealing millions of dollars forever from the federal government. It takes one acre of land for a single head of cattle, okay? This man has a herd of thousands of cattle that have been allowed to freely graze and gain weight and make him money at market for no cost. This man has fattened up his cows and made his, his bank fat for free, basically, okay? When the police went to go check him, Right. Because, again, this man has stole millions of dollars. He's living up on this compound. He's chilling. Right. When the police go to see him, what happened? They got to the edge of his land and they stopped. And on his land, you saw all those white people that went around and they went to protect him and defend the Constitution and all that. Right. Well, guess what? The federal government backed down. You ain't heard nothing else about Clyde Bunny. They ain't making no noise about him. They ain't no IRS going after him. There ain't nothing. Right. None of that is happening. You know why? Because he was on his land. He was on his land. It makes all the difference in the world. OK, so we know we know that the nation building efforts freeing the land is one of the most important things that we could do. We know this, but it's not simply a matter of getting the land. It's maintaining it. It's sustaining it. It's being able to hold it for the next 20 years. It's being able to hold this land in a real estate trust so that our children's children own this land, right? So we've got to think of creative ways in which to generate the money to be able to do so. Furthermore, we can't count on the local economy to sustain us. So again, what we have to do is we have to be very clear in our direction. What do you do? How do you get to that place? Okay. So uh, first, I, I will speak about, you know, I've got training initiatives um, and everybody's seen them. I do um, technical trainings. I teach certification trainings, A plus, network plus, um, introductions to uh, Python programming, um, int introduction to virtual programming, um, solar uh, photovoltaic classes, how to build um, solar solutions, right? How to build wind based power solutions, these kinds of classes. And I do these for free. Right. And I've been doing this for about four years and I've watched and I've been really blessed to see thousands of people's lives change, not just for themselves, but for their great grandchildren. Why do I mention this? I mention this because there's a couple of things that, have, again, I'm going to point out something that we have seen happen and we didn't really pay attention. OK, there was a cult by the names of he by the name of Heaven's Gate. OK, Heaven's Gate uh, lived in this compound. Um, for years, okay, and they determined that the Hale Bop Comet was going to come back and it was coming to take white people. It was coming to save them from what they have done. So they got their Air Jordans all clean and, and like that. No, nope, this is exactly, they really did. Um, and they pumped up their sneakers so that they had plenty of air in them and they laid down and drank the Kool Aid and they all died, okay? Maybe they did go back on the comet. Who knows? I don't know. What is most important here, what is most relevant, is that these people lived in this compound for years. They didn't count on the local economy to be able to run their compound. 
Their lights were on. Their water was on. They were not in arrears in any way. Their taxes were paid. Everything was done. How did they do this? They didn't leave this compound. How did they do this? They did this through technology. Today, we've got a global marketplace. This is the first time in history Africans have a global marketplace that they can compete in where your skin doesn't negatively affect your ability to go forward. This is the first time. Not one generation prior to you has had this level of anonymity and ability. And what are we doing? We're showing off our, our behind, right? We, 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 you know, come on, man. We still talking about the pyramids and we talking about, you know, knowledge that has been uncovered. Uh, Dr. Henry Clark, uh, John Cl Henry Clark, he's uncovered this, right? Shake on the Diop. He's done the work. There is no reason. Carter Woodson, they've done this work. So for us to continue to be regurgitating this, these facts and, and pointing out how wrong they are and how sick they are, and how, whoa, while we're standing in their house, yo, I'm saying, it comes time for us to really and clearly define the forward movement, what needs to be done right now, okay? So Heaven's Gate, they were able to finance everything that they did by through technology. They did websites, they did um, antivirus removal, they consulted uh, all over the world. No one knew who they were doing business with. They just set up their website, they started doing business. Okay? Um, and so they were able to pay their their go forward reality. Pump up their sneakers and go. They had the latest Jordan, see you later. Okay. So that was one way. And that's certainly something that we need to be aware of and to factor in a go-forward capacity. How do we continue to, to generate the income? But we've created a group. And the group is called The Ledge, right? Grand, I'm sorry, the group, group is called Grand Risings. Okay? And what we intend to do is we've got, um, we've set up a, an, a model in which that's, that says each of us is going to donate $20 a month. Okay, that's five dollars a week. Each will donate twenty dollars a month. Okay, I've seen properties in um, in various states that are selling for fifty nine thousand dollars. Right, they got a tiny home on it, and it's got twenty seven acres of land. Okay, my suggestion is we quickly pool small amounts of money. Not uh, look, we're not talking about big money. If I'm talking about five dollars a week, don't ask me whether or not you're going to get a title or a deed to the land. It's five dollars, right? It's five dollars. What I'm saying is, if we pool this small amount of money, we got a down payment on one of those properties, one of those farms, right now, right this minute. Okay. So now, we put a down payment on that property. We find a master farmer, and we send that that family to that land. Okay. We send them to the land that we just purchased. They live in that tiny home rent free. They don't got to pay nothing. Okay. What they do have to do is they've got to. Um, harvest crops and the crop that we want to harvest is hemp okay hemp is a gold mine hemp has the capacity to change everything that we've ever done forget the marijuana legislation that's smoke and mirror that's to keep you focused on the thing that they've been using the instrument that they've been using to hold you down and lock you up right and they still have designs even in their decriminalization even in the decriminalization of marijuana, look deep into the words. What they say is that they won't, they won't necessarily arrest you or kick you out of uh, public housing projects for having marijuana. They won't necessarily. They can. They reserve the right to. But it's not common. It's not something that they're going to enforce, generally speaking. What does that mean? That means whenever they got to beef with you, that means you got to be real shy, quiet, and very unassuming. Because the second you do something that they don't like, they do have justification and they do have the ability to evict your family and to take what it is that you have. Okay? So while they're decriminalizing it and they're making it okay on the one side, they still have a plan. They still have a template to turn you into an inmate. Okay? So the hemp is the glitter. It's the, it is, I'm sorry, the, the marijuana legislation and the decriminalization is the glitter. It's the thing to catch your eye. The real, real gold here is the hemp. It is the industry killer. We can build a car out of hemp and we can create the fuel that powers that car. 
okay? We have a unique opportunity here today with this hemp, with it being legal in 13 states today for us to be able to grow. I say we send a farmer to this land. We send a farmer and his family to this land. And they all got to be good at this, right? And they're going to grow hemp. The property that I spoke about, $59,000 for with a tiny house and 27 acres, put 20 acres towards the cultivation of hemp. Okay? 20 acres. And I tell you, by the first crop, by the time that first crop comes in, three-month growth cycles, right? By the time that first crop comes in, what do we do now? Now, we've got the material to be able to um, produce health and beauty products. We've got the material to create dietary products, to create textile products, to create building materials. We have the uh, resource to be able to build all of these different industries. Okay, so we start small. Let's start at the textile. Okay, let's make clothing out of this hemp. Okay, let's make the building materials out of this hemp to build houses. What, no matter what we choose, at the end of the day, it is profitable. Even if we were to just sell those crops, it's profitable. It's profitable enough to not only pay for the land and, and the farmer's life, but it's profitable enough to be able to fuel nation building efforts anywhere else. So now, I spoke about $20, right? $5 each. Okay, so now we had enough to put down a down payment on this house and we got that thing working. Beautiful, okay? At the same time, again, we wanna start small. So I'm not talking about factories yet. I'm not talking about factories yet. I'm talking about facilities where we're gonna process this hemp, where we're gonna put our own people to work processing this hemp. We're going to teach them how to turn raw hemp into textile, raw hemp into dietary, raw hemp into health and beauty products, okay? And we're going to do this throughout the nation, okay? Throughout the nation. We're going to use that one hemp farm to fuel many initiatives. But here's the thing. We're still generating this five dollars, right? So let's buy another property. We can buy a property at overnight in cash deals, just generating again. How many people I'm talking about? I'm talking about a thousand people, a thousand people, twenty dollars a month. Okay, we can take in cash deals overnight before they ever see us coming. The lands and the resources that are going to allow us to grow forward. Okay, so we got a hemp farm moving. Now we grab another one. How about we build a fish farm, right? Let's get it in South Carolina where hemp is legal again. Um, let's get it in South Carolina where we can grow rice right on the water. Let's get it in a place where we can grow that fish farm and we can raise fish and hydroponic um, agriculture at the same time in, in uh, a fraction of the space, right? Let's get a farm going, a daily, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a, um, an agricultural farm where we're growing some kale, where we're growing potatoes, where we're, we're growing the foods and things that are going to be necessary for every single nation building effort. And so what am I talking about? I'm not talking about us all donating five dollars, right? A thousand people donating five, a thou, uh, excuse me, a thousand people donating five dollars. And then at the end of this period, we all move to this place. No. What I'm talking about is building that place into an economic vehicle. So by itself, that hemp farm that we're talking about with the 27 acres, no one else is going to live there. Just the farmer. No one else will live there. Just the farmer. And what he will do is he will produce the materials and the resources for the rest of us. He ain't got to pay no rent. He's straight. Right? We got that. Okay? And the product that he's producing also got that. So we're good. Okay? The next farm that we acquire, again, agricultural, growing food for us. Through these efforts, what happens is we're shaking out business models because we're going to need a truck to move that hemp from the first farm. And we're going to need a truck to move the produce from the other farm. So now we're talking about a trucking business, all black, right? With the hemp that's being produced, we're talking about processing facilities where we've got young brothers and sisters turning this hemp into a usable product, right? So we're talking about jobs there. We're talking about people um, prepared to go to the agricultural farm and do the picking, right? Let's pull this kale up out of the ground. We get to, we get to harvest this, right?
So we're talking about jobs there. What I'm talking about is a vehicle, right? A vehicle that is capable of sustaining economically and with resource all of our individual nation building efforts. At the end of this, at the end of this, because now we've got industry going, we've got trucks moving, we've got um, people processing hemp to to uh, generate building materials, to generate health and beauty supplies, to generate dietary, to generate um, textiles and clothes and footwear. We've got these industries rolling. We've got an agricultural industry growing where we need pickers, where we need people to grab that food. Now we've got an economy going. This is a little economy. And so now what do we do? We now create a cryptocurrency, an African-based cryptocurrency. And when we pay that truck driver, we pay him in black money. And when we pay those pickers, we pay them in black money. What we do is we have now, so now we've created the economy and we've also created our own currency. Okay. So at the end of the line, what happens is while we're still in white America, we are living without white America. Okay, we're generating our own money. That money is still backed. When we need to transfer that and, and turn it into dollars to pay the IRS for the land, it's easy. We got it. Okay, we got it. This model is based on, again, a game of numbers. We're using the social media, we're using this social networking, and we're using all the social, but we ain't networking. Okay, again, this is the first time in 400 years that Africans have had a global marketplace where they can do business 24 hours a day without your skin being an inhibitor to your business dealings. This is the first time. Not one in any of your generations has ever had this kind of opportunity in front of them. I suggest that we use it. I suggest that we think very, very clearly as it relates to forward progress and what we need to do. We need to build an economic vehicle. Again, we have to lose the thinking that we're going to be able to move somewhere and count on that local economy for anything. We can't. We can't. We must count on ourselves. So that means before you move, you got to have something somewhere else that is fueling your endeavors. Okay. I suggest to you, hemp is legal in 13 states today. What we need to do is get to those states, get licensed, buy up the land overnight, overnight, and don't move 100 people there. Mm -mm, mm -mm. We move a farmer there and maybe a security detail. Okay, We move a farmer and a security detail and we get, to the, get those crops pumping. Right? We get the hemp moving. The second we do that, we're going. We got fuel. We can move forward. Okay. So that hemp is really, really important for us to jump on right this minute. It is important for us to quickly pool our money and get into that game. What they're trying to do is create a monopoly. They're going to get rich on that. They're going to get rich on that. And they're hoping you're not paying attention. This is the game for us. Malawi just made it legal to grow hemp there. South Africa is the legal hemp growing rights. We need to recognize this and globally move on it. It's not a matter of acquiring the land. It's a matter of keeping it and fueling your own reality. The way that we do that is through creating these products. Furthermore, what we're going to do, the grand rising, is we're going to um, create our own products. Let's create some um, uh, so let's create some some uh, swag that we all use, right? Some things that we all like, right? That promote um, black power. Let's get some um, welcome mats, right? I've got welcome mats that we can make. We've got shower curtains that we can make. We can make all of these different things that are specific to us. And we can sell them among each other for low money with every dollar going towards these nation-building efforts, Right. At the same time that we're spending those dollars with ourselves and circulating them into that effort, we're also promoting pride because people are going to see these products and they're going to be like, whoa, where'd you get that? Yeah, I love that. Right. That RBG becomes infectious. OK, so we take these small trinkets, the small swag and we sell it amongst ourselves. You make something, I'll buy that. Twenty dollars. Fine. Everybody sells something for twenty dollars. 
Okay. In addition to us pooling twenty dollars a month, five dollars a week, let's build these. Let's make these small things: jewelry, um, deodorants, whatever it is. Let's make these things. Let's buy these things from each other. Let's um, instead of taking profit, let's get creative relative to the way that we're getting these products and the way that we're getting them delivered and shipped. Let's get creative with that and pool that money. Okay. As I say, we can take this nation overnight in cash deals, in cash deals. We want to be smart. We want an attorney and we, we're working on an attorney on the board. We want an attorney so that um, they are constantly negotiating the deals for us, these land deals. Oftentimes, these are owner financing opportunities. We can walk in with cash. We can walk in with cash. A thousand people don't need five dollars a week. We walk in with cash and take this land. Next thing you know, we're there. And we're there. And we're there. And so with intelligent design, with an intelligent design before any one of us moves. So we're all still working our jobs where we at, right? We're all still doing our same thing. However, we are all also a member of this S Corp. And this S Corp has a real estate trust and it is acquiring properties and these properties are not going to sit when we're going to we're going to purchase intelligently okay and we're going to grow that hemp and we're going to grow the moringa and we're going to grow the things that we need in our nation building efforts it is at that point when we have that economic machine in place that we can grab land and start moving to it you know why because we're not counting on the local economy anymore we got the hemp products moving. We got clothes moving. We got young girls that have had uh, dreams of being fashion designers, putting those fashions into place and, and, and making clothes. We've got a global brand, right? We've got food that's being moved in and out. So we're not dependent upon that local economy for anything. Nothing can stop it at that point. But it is important to put these nuts and bolts in place to fuel this forward energy. So I speak to the grand rising, the grand rising of us as a people. It requires clear thought, clear direction, and commitment to doing exactly what it is that I've just described. So it begins by pooling money. It begins by selling small things to each other. You know, the Jews came and they were really skilled at putting together small things, jewelry, right? They were putting together small things and they didn't mind that they were making pencils. Back in the day in New York, um, you would find the Jews before school selling pencils to black people, selling pencils for pennies. And guess what? Them pennies made dollars, right? So I say to you, uh, what does it say? You know, I'm not, I'm not a religious man, but I read everything. And it says, despise ye not the day of humble beginnings. Nah, don't worry about small pennies. Don't worry that it's pennies right now. We've got a goal. And all I need you to do is put your pennies with my pennies. If we do that, and we get a thousand people to put, put their pennies together, we're going to take these lands, we're going to take this property overnight. Forget asking for anything. We'll own this. And with a clear plan, with licensure to grow hemp and with a very clear plan, nothing can stop us. The realities of us moving to a land that we own, that we secure, that we police, that we completely control, that we educate our own, that we serve as our own um, doulas and midwives and resource counselors. And we are the civil engineers and when we're doing that, that is the reality in five years. If we do what it is that I'm describing right now, that's a reality in five years. We can move to these metropolises that we build, that we build. It is all contingent upon economic reality being built by us right here, right now. Hemp is that vehicle. The grand rising is, is showing you, is driving you to the place that we need to be. Let's get together. Come join me. I've got a bunch of initiatives that are out there, and a lot of you all know me already. You've heard me for years, right? I've got the Echo Village. Echo Village is a reality. Echo Village is the end goal. Echo Village is the end goal, where we are all living together, where we are sustaining ourselves, where we have pride in a community because now we have common unity. There's common unity at that point. You're not going to go spray paint up that house. You're not going to break down that house. You was just working on it yesterday. You won't do it.
right? So Echo Village is a reality. The Grand Rising is the vehicle to get us there. So every single thing that you've ever seen me speak about or do all ties into individual initiatives. It all goes to one initiative, which is self-sufficiency. But uh, it's the individual elements and ingredients necessary to make this recipe right. Okay? So, again, reach out. Y'all know me. It's Peter Brown. Right? Reach out. The Grand Rising. It's a new group that we just created. It's got a new model. Again, we, um, we, it requires a $20 donation per month. $20 donation per month. And that money will all go, 100% goes to the purchase of land. We want to buy land this week. We want to close on land this week. In addition to the $20 donation, we've got, just like I said, that swag. we got the ledge t-shirts that are out there. We've got, oh, I've got some custom um, emblems for your car. So you remove all the branding that they have and put on your custom emblems with an RBG flow, right? We've got these different um, creative marketing um, models and these small trinkets and swag and things that we've got that we're going to circulate, right? And each of us needs to get them. $20. It's not, it's not big money. Everybody buy this swag. Everybody wear this lead shirt all of a sudden. Guess what we've just done? We've created a brand. We've created a brand name. When you have a brand, people can't simply come and take things from you. You can't have Ig Iggy Iguana call herself the queen of hip hop when you have a brand. You can't have Miley Cyrus twerking her back saying it's hers when you have a brand right? A global brand. So we circulate this swag between ourselves. And this swag that we circulate is generating money. And every dime goes to building or buying that land, building that farm. Let's get our people onto that farm. Let's get them cultivating the hemp. Um, let's trench the grow areas so that we've got a greenhouse. So we've got four harvest seasons, 365 years a day, uh, a year of growth. Um, and let's turn that into the, the monster economy that it can be. There's no reason to wait for somebody else. What are we going to watch until the Koreans step in and do this? The Arabs step in and do this? The white boys are already on it, right? This is our time. This is what we must do, okay? Come together with me, man. Like I said, any endeavor that you've ever seen me involved in, look at it. If it's a money, um, if it's a money-based endeavor where we're getting together and putting us, look at it. My name is up there first. My money's in there first. Okay? So what I'm saying is, step towards me. I'm going to step towards you. We do this, and I'm telling you, everything that we need, everything that we need is 100% financed for the next 10 generations. And this is the logic. Grand rising, my beloved. Peace and power.